Okay, I'm sure in your high school physics course you already learned what Archimedes principle is, okay? And well, basically what it says is that as we submerge an object inside a fluid, the object would experience an upward force, okay? That force would be given by, okay, or otherwise known as the buoyancy force, the specific gravity or the density times the gravity, if you do not have the specific gravity term at that time, multiplied by the volume of the liquid displaced, okay? Now what you didn't know is that how did how are we going to show Archimedes principle using a rigorous mathematical treatment, possibly with no room for error? Well, you know that's what I mean. In high school physics, they were just through your formula and they would just ask you to use it. Okay, let's use it. But then I believe in exploration of the science. Uh, one should really know all these small formulas that we have taken for granted and how uh, they went and go about doing it. Archimedes principle. Okay, so we're gonna do it over here using our uh, mathematical treatment. Okay, so. We are in a certain fluid, okay? Certain fluid and the specific gravity is given by us uh, like that, a symbol over there. Okay, and we have submerged an object inside, okay? We have submerged an object inside, okay? So we want to hopefully find the, the force that is acting on that object by the fluid. So here is the step that maybe many of you don't know, but I know and I will try to show it to you. We are going to enclose that object in a parallel pipe. Okay, parallel pipe, which is basically a rectangular, rectangular 3D object that uh, encases the, the object over here. So for the sake of argument, I'll just write it, draw it like that. Okay, a parallel pipe. There we go. Okay, a parallel pipe. And obviously we know that the parallel pipe would be, the volume would be greater by the object, right? And obviously these spaces over here uh, is the water. Okay, so now we're going to resolve forces, okay, that are acting on the parallel pipe, okay? including the force of the object, okay? So, and also bear in mind that the parallel pipe is in the fluid, right? So, uh, let's, let's, just, let's just do it right here, okay? Uh, let me just have a quick check, okay, F1, F2. Okay, now, it will experience four forces, F1, F2, okay, F3, F4, okay? What are these forces? These forces are the forces of the fluid on the parallel pipe, okay? On top of that, there is the weight of the parallel pipe, okay? The weight of the parallel pipe, which is just labeled as W acting down. And then there is the force that the object exerts on the parallel pipe, okay? FB. And for the sake of the argument, we will just label that as FB, you know? Um, it may be the buoyancy force, it may not, okay? However, let's just bear in mind that we are analyzing the free body diagram of the parallel pipe, not of the object, of the parallel pipe. And hopefully, by Newton's third law, that would, this would be the force, or we would find the force of the parallel pipe acting on the object like so. Okay, now, resolving forces. Okay, um, let's just... Now, we don't need to care about the horizontal direction, okay, because F3 definitely equal to F4. So now, what we are more concerned with is the vertical direction, okay? So, um, three forces going down, one force going up. F2 is equals to, okay, F1 plus W, weight of the parallel pipe plus FB, the force that the object exists on the parallel pipe. Okay, now re-expressing this F1 take away, sorry, F2 take away F1 equals to weight plus FB. Okay, now analyze. F1 take away F, F2 take away F1, what could that mean? That means I'm taking this force away from this force over here, okay? Knowing that as we, hydrostatic distribution, okay? As we go down, the force will increase, right? Due to the increase in pressure. Okay, so we label this as H2, label this as H1. What can we say about the difference of F2 and F, F1? Basically, it's just the force or the, the increase in force that as we go down from here to here. I hope you understand. The force here plus the force over here will give us the force F2 that balances out at this uh, plane over here. So we are concerned with the force over here, but that shouldn't be too difficult to find because the force is equals to pressure. The force will be equals to the uh, pressure times the area, right? So we can equal that to the specific weight, okay, times H2 take away H1, okay, multiplied by the area, okay. I hope that makes sense. Remember, we're calculating the, calculating the increase in force as we go from here to here. Knowing that this plus this force here would equal this force over here. That is what exactly F2 take away F1 is saying. Okay? And that would just, the areas over here, so basically we, we need the change in the pressure, okay, which is the specific weight times the H2 minus H1 down here like so. Okay? I hope that is clear enough. Now this is F2 take away F1. So what can we say about W? W is the weight of the parallel pipe, right? Now, W is the weight of the parallel pipe, 
which is gonna be given by the specific gravity, okay, multiplied by the volume, right? The volume of the parallel pipe, okay, and that would be, okay, H2 take away H1 multiplied by area A, okay? We multiply it by area A first. H2 take away H1 multiplied by area A will give us the volume. However, we need to subtract the volume of the object, which in this case, we would just label as V with a dash across here, okay? Let's say again. H1, sorry, this is a bracket, uh, okay, never mind. H2 take away H1 is the height over here. We multiply that by the area, we get the volume of the parallel pipe. However, the water does not fill the whole parallel pipe. We need to minus the space inside the parallel pipe, which we were given as V to, uh, with a, a minus with a dash across. That is the same, that is basically telling us V and the dash across is the volume of the object. And this will give us the, the shaded areas. We multiply that by the specific gravity, we get the weight of the parallel pipe. Okay, so rearranging, we can put FB, okay, is equals to F2 take away F1, take away the weights, which is equal to F2 take away F1 is over here, okay, specific weight take, um, F2 take away F1 times the area, multiplied by this over here. So I'm multi, I'm sorry, subtracting the weight. So I'm subtracting this, okay. F2 take away F1 multiply by area and then I would subtract so I add the, the specific weight multiplied by the displaced volume, okay? And this, as we can see, FB is equals to specific weight and the volume of displaced. There we go, the mathematical treatment of finding or of showing Archimedes principle, okay? Now, I would really like to be clear about this so we really know what the heck is going on. This FB here, like I said, I label it again, it's the force of the, the object exerting on the parallel pipe. Okay, I, I say again, the parallel pipe is the, the water that um, encases the object, less the object of the volume. Okay, so Newton's third law, it also tells us that the parallel pipe would exert the same force on the object, right? Which we, we, for the sake of argument, just label this as FB, okay? And this FB is going to be exactly the same as this. So this is how we have shown Archimedes principle that when we submerge the object inside, it will experience a buoyancy force FB, which is going to be equal to this over here. This now, this FB is acting on the object that we submerge. Okay, it's equal to this and it's equal to this over here. There we go. Okay, Archimedes principle. Um, 287 BC to 212 BC. Okay, uh, mechanician and mathematician. Okay, quite interesting, quite useful. Um, and you know, just to put the timeline in perspective, it's all the way before Christ. Okay, so it was um, Euler wasn't around at the time.